10-4, this is Officer Carter on the scene. It looks like an aircraft came down in the parking lot of Boss Mart on 3rd Ave. No confirmation on casualties yet, but I'm going to quarter on off the area. The tail fin looks Air Force. Might want to call the base to confirm. All right, I want two people on scene. Give me info on the pilot, jet, casualties, and damages. Johnson, you start working on the script and the print story. Yes, ma'am. Who are you calling? I'm calling the base. I want to run the story at 11 o'clock. God, give me a second. <coughs> With Public Affairs, this is Erman Winchell. Plane crash. Dang. That sucks, dude. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure that's gonna go over well. Don't be caught off guard when a base emergency happens, because it will, and you and your team have to be ready. Remember, a crisis is anything that changes the perception of your base in a negative way. Let's start by taking a look at the immediate changes to your workflow during a crisis. Timeliness is key in crisis communication, so the transition from normal ops to crisis ops can be jarring. People start gearing up, answering phones, and getting dispatched to one of four main locations during a crisis. Where you work can depend on your rank, office manning, skill set, and breadth of experience in different facets of public affairs. The Crisis Action Team, or CAT, focuses on strategic actions to continue the mission during and after contingencies, crises, natural and man-made disasters, or wartime situations, as well as enabling CAT members to analyze the emergency and mitigate threats to personnel, aircraft, and equipment. The commander typically works here, and there's always at least one representative from each wing staff agency to include your PAO. Think of it like the fellowship of the wing. Media calls should never be handled in the CAT. The risk of a reporter hearing crosstalk is too great. This goes for the Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, as well. The EOC serves as the command and control element that coordinates information and resources to support the installation's actions before, during, and after an incident. You have to receive special training to be in the EOC. It's the hub for giving the commander live and accurate information. This position requires the utmost professionalism. More often than not, you'll assist with efforts from your office. You'll likely receive phone calls from media about the incident. It's up to you to be professional, courteous, and as informative as you're allowed to be. The first three locations deal with community and media relations, super important functions of crisis communication. The fourth location, on scene, can sometimes be overlooked, but is critical for a proper response. Documentation of the mishap, on base or off, is vital for proper information flow, as well as future investigations that may be required into the incident. You'll have access that few others will to ensure everything is properly documented, both in stills and video. You'll often have another team member with you to feel the media at the site of the incident. To learn more about on-scene video documentation, check out our previous Blank Slate episode on Video Alert Doc. The flow of information has changed drastically over the last few years. The public used to rely more often on Air Force officials to make a statement before they considered having accurate information on the incident. Not anymore. In a world where someone with an anime profile picture and four followers could potentially misinform a nation on an Air Force crisis, you must have an absolute mastery over information flow and the platforms made available to you as a PA airman. This ties back to how crucial timeliness is to the whole process. 
If you don't tell the story, somebody else will. The speed of information is heavily influenced by the relationship you have with your commander. Do they trust your team? How willing are they to hand over information during a crisis? How important do they think your mission is? If your office performs well and hits command lines of effort during normal ops, you might find a smoother process with your commander. Their trust and support are one of your strongest tools. On top of having good relations with your commander, you'll also benefit largely from having a good working relationship with local news media. Rapid retrieval and distribution of information will further allow you to tell your own story. If the public is seeing Air Force officials owning up to mistakes while doing everything they can to keep the public safe and informed, that's good PR. And ultimately, that's what Crisis Comm should be when helmed by a well-trained team of public affairs airmen. Good PR, being proactive and using rapid information technology and good relationships with leadership and the community will help you push command messaging to the public. Mistakes happen. It's up to you to get accurate information out there. Maximum disclosure with minimum delay. For more information on crisis communication, you can visit the DINFOS Pavilion website. 